There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Wait, what? Who are you? What are you doing here? Hello, book maniac aficionados. <laughs> We've kidnapped Sean. He's in our basement. We don't own a basement. He's still there. He's in our basement with an uncomfortable chair and only genre fiction. <laughs> don't worry, he'll have a great time. He'll DNF them. I've stolen his dry white. We're taking over his Friday reads. So this is Sean the Book Maniac's channel. This is Sean the Book Maniac's Friday read. But Sean is not presenting it. This we is are. what's happening. We are presenting it. Now, can you all do Sean a favour and not unsubscribe from his channel on principle? This is not a permanent situation. We promise we'll give him back shortly. In the meantime... Unless he enjoys the genre fiction in the basement, <laughs> in which case... We don't know who he is anymore. In the meantime, I'm Nell and my channel is Bookunt. It's a brand new channel because I used to be on Scott's channel, Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. But now I've given that all to him. The links to these channels will presumably be in the show notes. What has Sean read this month? Week. Week. It's week. only a week. What? Jesus. Oh, I don't know. Time is relative. You're a relative. Yeah, to my sister. Sean starts with these bales. So we've got to settle in for 37 books he didn't finish. But that's a lie. It was 42. <laughs> It was actually none, which is really disappointing. The one week where we get to present Sean's Friday Reads, there's not a single bail. We don't get to say all of the nasty things he said about books. Only other booktubers we gossiped about. Shh. It's a secret. So what's, what's Sean currently reading? What's he started? Well, this week, Sean has started Louise Erdrich's recent release, The Sentence. Recent release? Hasn't this been a booktube darling for like six decades now? Most recent release. Mm, mm. Sean is reading this as an audio text combo and he's found out that he's been pronouncing Lee Louise Erdrich's name. Erdrich's name. Oh, wrong. it's Erdrich, not Erdrich. This is a particularly Sean book. Because it's got a ghost in it. Because it's got a ghost in it. And we know what Sean loves about ghosts. I'm really shocked that he's kicking on with it. To be if honest. we can have some navel gazing and some talking animals. <laughs> but he said he's enjoying the way the ghost is done and he's clearly enjoying the character of Flora. Let's let's actually discuss the synopsis quickly for Yeah, you should do that because you've read the book. For book maniac fans who have not heard about Louise Erdrich's book a few times on other channels, this is a book about a woman who is convicted of running drugs with a dead body in a sort of a setup situation where she was She was framed. She went to jail for a long time. She is released from jail and she gets a job at a bookshop run by a lady called Louise. Erdrich. It, yeah. I mean, uncomplicated author insert. They, and it's the story of the bookshop. Yeah, it's the story of this lady and this ghost, Flora, essentially. Okay. At the bookshop. At the bookshop. And Flora is... Sean called her a pretendian, which is a Canadian term for somebody that pretends to be Indigenous but isn't really. Uh, right. Yeah. In Australia, we call that a fucking twat. Does Sean swear on his channel? He does now. So read the quote now. Read the quote. Penn had started working here because she developed obsessions with female authors, alive and dead, and was having a May-December romance with Isaac Dinison's stories. In the beginning, she told me that she intended to get a Mount Rushmore-style tattoo of her favourite female authors on her chest. Clarice, Octavia, Joy... She was debating between Isaac Dinesen, Zitkalasa, Susan Sontag. I thought this was a ridiculous idea, so I confused her by extolling Marguerite Duras. Would she choose Duras's young face from The Lover or her sexy ravaged face from thereafter? At last I told her the whole thing would make sex uncomfortable. Who wants to be confronted with five pairs of eyes in bed? You're not going to have sex at all with grandmas peeking up over your dodo shag? She's clear. Called Jackie from The Office. What makes you think I have sex on my back? Said Penn. <laughs> Excellent. And think about what time does to the bosom, I said in a prim voice. By the time you're 60, they'll all look like the scream. Oh my God, said Penn. Will you aunties leave me alone? But she was laughing too. It does sound funny. It does. Is it funny? No. 
Oh, Sean, you're leading me astray. Do you think that Sean will continue to like this book? I'm shocked that Sean is liking this book. This is <laughs> not Sean material. This is not a Sean book. I Louise Erdrich's writing is very nice, and I think Sean would appreciate the writing. And he said he'd read two others, one of which he raved about. So it's all right. I can be wrong on this. No, I'm just interested. I'm. Re- I will be interested to see if he continues to like the ghost story. Also, I, I read it a lot of books ago. Maybe it was funny and I didn't remember it. He's this one sounds really cool. It's a memoir. It's an arc. He's going to interview the author, so he didn't tell us anything. It's all under embargo. We got the name out of him by beating him with very soft cushions. <laughs> What's it called, Scott? Working 9 to 5. A woman's movement, a labour union. And the iconic movie as a fan of... Dolly Parton. No! Lily Tomlin. Yes! Jane Fonda. Also! And... The guy they kill in the movie. No. And a giant commie. I support this book. (laughs) I am so excited to hear what... What the deal is. So we're not telling you anything about it because Sean... Didn't tell us anything about it. Mum was the word. Um, But there will be a proper discussion and interview with the author forthcoming. That is all Sean started this week. It's only two. That's not many. I know. Normally he starts like 17. 17. Yeah. Yeah. We picked the same number. (laughs) It's because we're married. It's because it actually happened once. He finished some books. Two. Again, we're foreshadowing for another future Sean video. This time, it's a callback to the Soggy Book Maniac tag. (gasps) Sean is inviting Heather for a chat about Margaret Atwood's collection of short stories, Stone Mattress. I really, really liked that video that Sean and Heather did together. They're a good team. Comedy duo. Oh, I just... Silliness gold. If I was opening a pub, I would install a Sean and a Heather at a table with booze. I mean... I think that this pub would then obviously... Isn't that why we kidnapped him? Yeah, Heather, (laughs) watch out. (laughs) If you find yourself at a pub with Sean... (laughs) There may be something in the drink. Um, okay. We should not threaten booktubers with kidnapping. <laughs> they all know we live in another country, surely. Surely. Anyway, so, uh, Sean made it very clear that as is par for the course with Margaret Atwood, some of these stories were great and some of them were shit. Um, but the ones Sean enjoyed seemed to have a thematic link of being about old folks being slutty (laughs) reminiscing that's what the notes said about their sluttiness in the era of free love and such but there also seems to be a thread of authors who wrote about love affairs and then returning to the works about the love affairs after the love affairs have become whatever they've become in later life which sounds like an interesting pile of stuff So I might read it. Yeah. I'm going to wait for the... uh, Movie? (laughs) Sean and Heather in a book movie. Yep. Be like David and Margaret. (sighs) I don't think they understand that one. I miss Margaret. Is she dead? No, she's just sold her soul and doing mostly ads. Uh, All right. Um, Sean finished a book called The Last Brother by Natasha Aparna. And it is translated... From the, I assume the French because it takes place in Mauritius. Translated by Jeffrey. Strong? Mm. Your handwriting is disgusting. <laughs> I'm relying on my memory. That. Um, it's, it's Sean Vox did it to us. Oh, 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 okay, I can look it up. Pew, 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 pew. Strawn. By Jeffrey Strawn. Yes. Now, this sounds like a really interesting book. Yeah, I'm totally reading this. Uh, Sean's given it three stars and said it was thoroughly disappointing, but then his description blew my little brain. Yeah. So, Sean said he was really enjoying the lyrical prose of this novel. Well, he didn't use those words. He said the writing then, was nice. Then he said that... It was... A bit overly sentimental is the story, is the feeling I'm and getting. The prose maybe became the downfall of yeah. the novel. This is about Raj, 
Raj is living on Mauritius in 1944, and Raj's two brothers die in a flash flood. And he has a bit of, you know, grief slash survivor's guilt slash shitty parenting by his abusive alcoholic father. Uh, Who beats him up so bad that he has to take him to the infirmary of the jail where he works. And it's there that Raj meets David. David is a Jewish boy who is there as part of the... This is based in in 19... This is, sorry, this is set in 1944. Yeah, and it seems to be, like, historically accurate as far as this internment camp of Jewish refugees set up on Mauritius after they were basically sent away from Israel. Something I know nothing about. No, but... We trust the author that this actually happened. Yeah. Um, Which sounds interesting, but it also sounds like you don't get much of that sort of historical context because the whole, well, most of it is from the perspective of a nine-year-old who clearly doesn't understand what's going on as far as World War II. Yeah. Uh, And then on top of this, you know, at the start, the, 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 the beginning of this book is Raj as an adult going to search for David's grave. So you know what happens to David and you know what happens to Raj, which is an always an interesting choice by the author, I think. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is that these two characters communicate in English despite neither of them really speaking English because they don't share a common language and they both have the most English to speak to each other. I think a friendship without language is an interesting yeah, thing to explore. Yeah, especially in the context of, like, um, both of them are grieving and that shared emotive experience without uh, without a complex language to communicate. I, I'm really quite interested by that. Sean says, ultimately, three stars. He didn't actually... Three stars is not a... That's right. Three stars. Sean has coerced four different star ratings to be bad and one to be good. I mean, he didn't bail on it, so it wasn't complete tripe, but... (laughs) He did say he would read another book by the author. Yes. So ultimately, Sean's negative review, he spent the whole time telling me what was wrong with it, and I'm going to go read it. He said he'd prefer to be reading sci-fi. He did not. (laughs) He didn't. He didn't, no. Why does it shake when I shake? It shakes when I laugh. Oh, it's you. You do it. Oh, yes. It's my giggles. Ah. It's jiggling with joy, like my belly. Jigglypuff. Sean started two books. Sorry. Sean plans to start two books next week. Uh, The first one is a book for Women in Translation Month. It is Fieldwork in Ukrainian Sex with the very provocative cover of a lady piece of paper. (laughs) a tucked piece of paper. Oh, it could be tucked. Oh, it could be tucked. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Is that, that's a representation of a woman anyway. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I want to read this just for the title. Um, do you have the notes on it? Who's it by? Uh, someone I'm not going to be able to pronounce. I'm going to give you... Yeah, give me the pronunciation so I can butcher a word. Oksana Zabusko and translated by... Um, Hel- Helena Prince. Sorry about that. Um, this is a non- novella, 160 pages, somewhat experimental, so who knows? It could be fabulous, it could be an experiment. Yeah, but a lot of people are reading that book at the moment. The other book Sean is planning to start is Something to Answer For by P.H. Newby, which is the winner of the 1969 Booker Prize, the first year that it won. Back when it was a newbie prize, so they awarded it to newbie. I'm glad that the screen's not shaking for that joke. Terrible. Mm. Uh, And this is going to be a buddy read with Kieran from KD Books, so there'll be a video forthcoming, I think. Yes, two big personalities, two somewhat silly people. I hope that Kieran doesn't throw the book at Sean. That's what I hope. I mean, we've He's... kidnapped him and we haven't even done that. No, only cushions. Yeah, comfy cushions. So, we've done this fabulous version of Sean's Friday Reads, um, and if you would like to see that he is alive and well will ensure that he shows a newspaper with a date on it on his version of our Friday Chit Reads, which will be over on my channel, Book Out. Uh, Link in the show notes. I think that's all. Um, Yeah. Take it away, Ulysses. 
Thank <laughs> you.